basically I wanted to make it 120 square feet. I kind of sneaked into the unpermitted building category. I use it for my office and John plays his cello. It's really been useful for the cello because the renters, it's pretty noisy to have a beginner cello player yeah. in the house. It's good to have a separate room. I could fit, you know, a full length couch that someone could take a nap on and also fit, you know, my, my desk in there. So it's big enough for me and two clients to sit here. And it's also big enough to fit a full set of full size set of architecture plans in these slots. The smaller the building, the more it forces you to not keep a lot of crap, <laughs> forces you to keep your life simple and not store things you don't need, which I feel like that's a huge, I mean, if I could afford a huge house, I wouldn't really want one just because I'd have to have a whole staff to keep everything in order. Whereas we live on the top floor up there and it's, I think it's about 700 square feet. We could maybe use a tiny bit more space because we have a big dog and a cat and a lot of hobbies, but for the most part, it works pretty well. It was first just me and Frodo, and then it, John and Isba showed up, which was a problem at first, these two guys. Now they, they tolerate each other. And then six months ago, Willa, baby. That's our guest, guest bedroom up there. Do you actually use it? Uh-huh, a lot. Elderly guests don't like it so much. So you've actually physically done a lot of the work in here? Mm-hmm. I've built all the cabinets. The kitchen is pretty much as I found it. Well, this is an Ikea cabinet with, I don't know if you've heard about Ikea hacking, but they have very pretty good quality drawers. I just made the, you can make the faces any way you want. They're easy to make, it's just a slab of plywood. This is sailboat hardware. This was an adjustable shelf. I, never, I thought I might want to store stuff back there and I could, you know, adjust it like this, but once it gets things on it, you don't tend to want to adjust it. There's the way around. Who's that? She's here to look at your house. So you, did you ever think about moving with, when you were pregnant or...? No, you know, honestly, I love this space. You can see probably, you know, a thousand different kinds of trees out this window. I, I like the fact that if you stand right in the middle of the house, you can see Golden Gate Bridge, you can see Berkeley Hills. You can see all this, and then you have, well, uh, I should open that front door. You can see trees that way. <laughs> so if you stand right here, if I open that curtain. That's the real beauty of a small house, in my opinion. Being able to see views in four directions when you stand in the middle of the house and not having, you know, a room blocking the view. I mean, we need another bedroom pretty soon, but is easier in the sense that there's less area to keep track of, less baby proofing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice morning. Makes it easy to clean the house when it's small. Yeah, yeah a lot less work. Which is nice. <laughs> I mean, that's the trade-off. You, you cannot keep very much stuff, which is good and bad. Sometimes you get rid of stuff that then you need again at some point, but it's nice. wonderful to get rid of stuff. It's almost like oh, Christmas. Yeah. This is our place yeah, where we put junk that we're going to get rid of. It feels good to, to have a pile of stuff that you actually can let go of and say, I don't need any of this anymore. We moved the litter box. The litter box is in the back of the closet, and that's how the cat gets in and out, which was a, a wonderful breakthrough because the litter box used to be in the bathroom. He goes in there, and then if we need to empty it, we, you know, we access it from the other side. So the litter box is, if, I mean, it's back under there. Living small, it helps to be able to build things yourself. <laughs> this is um, roller furler track from a sailboat. It was free in the scrap bin. It's a bookshelf stairs. Mm -hmm. I just invented it sitting on the couch over there, basically. What did you envision? My signature bookshelf stairs. I thought it would look good architecturally to have the bookshelves continue all the way up to the you can't really do stuff like this on paper so easily. It's sort of a design build. It'd be hard to show this in a drawing, you know, to show a client. Kind of just had to build it, sort of. This actually has a yeah, metal cool. pipe inside of it, and then it's just captured, which makes it easier to have a steep ladder because you can actually, like, lean back on it. 
But you can see you wouldn't want your 80 year old mother sleeping up here because she might, or father. Or your two year old child. <laughs> and then this is the <laughs> comfortable bed up here. It's quite cozy up here. When I first built it, I had another loft on that side and I envisioned kids sleeping on both sides, having battles across the living room, which someday might come true. I don't know. You know, I guess this place feels real. We've had a lot of guests in the last six months. The guests are in your space the whole time. It makes it really hard to have guests. There's a big trade-off. There's a lot of unfinished details here. I just kind of ran out of steam a little bit. This was my life for about two years, this apartment, and then got burned out, but it was supposed to have a really cool light fixture. That's just shop lighting. There's, there's some details up there that are pretty rough. I like things like these stripes. Mm -hmm. This is leftover from the lath and plaster that used to be there, and I could have sanded it off and had totally smooth beams, but it actually is cooler to have those stripes, I think. And the holes from the old knob and tube. Everything in this apartment was cheap, <laughs> done on a budget, nothing fancy. It was all pretty much done by me, which I'm not really trained as a carpenter, self-taught. This dresser is one of my best. It's made out of one post. It was a, about a 14 foot long, 10 by 10 old growth post that came out of a building. This one, you can see the grain is extremely straight and tight. I mean, it's a very old, big tree. And we got it for a, a song because it was just in with a bunch of other posts. So you actually made this entire thing? Uh-huh. Back when I had time. <laughs> All the drawers. To a real professional furniture maker, they'll see some amateur, amateur details, but... It was a labor of love. It took me a long time. Weeks of weekends and evenings. Hmm. Built the bed. The bed is made out of wood that I found in the basement here when I moved in. <laughs> I needed something that didn't block the window. That's one thing about small spaces, you often have to really, it, it helps to be able to customize. There's storage under there too. I, I never finished it. Those are just boxes with drawers in them. Not a very big closet for two, three people. <laughs> Curtains for closet doors, another space saving feature. This cabinet. That's a piece of redwood that John and his brother milled. I dig a lot of space. Or right. Just, yeah. This is a pretty affordable box. I don't know what we have in here. Toilet paper mostly. <laughs> this one is plywood, salvaged fir, and redwood. And this is old rigging from a sailboat, running rigging um, to make the hinge. Pyrography decoration, which is um, wood burning. There's more of that above the bathroom door. Being self-taught gives you creative freedom that people in the trades don't always yeah. have, too. This was actually my first hardwood piece. The bottom of it is hand-carved like a fish belly, <laughs> which was extremely labor-intensive, but fun. People that may not know a lot of the technical things all that well or have really that good of craftsmanship, but they come up with some pretty creative things that people that have been doing it forever in the trades don't think of because we're used to doing things in a very specific way. Now that I don't have a real shop in the garage, it's a lot easier to build things out of plywood. That's why you're seeing so much plywood, but I, know I needed a good, elegant place for the garbage, so that's recycling and garbage and recycling. And this was designed for cat food, but it's become regular food. Uh, these were just scraps of fur that I had lying around. A more sailboat Rigging, retired rigging. You're using a lot of sailboat inspired, it seems like. Are you? Do you think that you know what you do on the side is, really inspires your somehow? Yes, and it's just there's a lot of cool little parts you can use, and I have I get I get I can get them for free. I mean these are just. Like how this I used to have a 505 that had a lot of fancy parts. But you probably don't really want to. But one could adjust that. This isn't that useful, just because I never adjust it, but. You could see that that sort of thing could be quite useful and fun. Like John and I want to have a, a pulley. Our patio is way down there, and we want to have a, a system to lower like a, you know, food and dishes down to the patio so we don't have to carry them all around. I mean, a sailboat block would be a perfect thing to use to lower our picnic basket down there. It'd be nicer just to have a stairs. <laughs>
but there's not really room for a or stairs a slide. or a slide or a zip line, but you have to get creative when you can't have can't have it all.